Hello world and welcome to a new episode. Today we're going to talk about how to use technology in the agriculture sector. And this is a story about the man and his wife and their common vision of helping farmers uh, through uh, improving their farming skills and increase crops in terms of size and quality. And it's using uh, technology for greater good. So uh, Kim, who are we going to meet today? Yeah. Today we're meeting Vinay. Uh, Vinay is based in Pune in India uh, and he is a, a Harvard alumni and a, techni uh, a technical entrepreneur or entrepreneur within technology. He has worked more than 20 years with uh, digital transformation through technology. Uh, he specializes in cloud-based business applications and, and especially within NetSuite actually. Uh, so he's helped more than 400 companies with um, improving their processes um, through technology. And that's actually how we met uh, 10 years ago when he, his company at that time was helping us with the backend solution of our mm. um, platform. Okay. Well, so he started a, a venture called Area Life and uh, they have developed a unified platform for agriculture uh, through various applications, cloud applications and mobile applications. And they are supporting uh, through the entire uh, value chain of agriculture value chain. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to our next guest. Uh, welcome, Winnie. Hi, good morning. Good to see you both, uh, Kim and Peter. Yeah, good morning to you as well. So Vinny, or actually good day, I would say, because it's probably afternoon in, in your time. <laughs> exactly. So Vinny, you have, you've worked within IT for more, more or less all your life. Um, but in 2010, you actually had, or beginning of 2010s, uh, you had the opportunity to get to know the agriculture industry. Could you tell us a yeah. bit more why that was and, and what your learnings was uh, were from that time? Yeah. Right. So, I, like you mentioned, Kim, you know, I've always been in technology, and my um, my role primarily has been in terms of using technology in businesses in terms of how to improve efficiency. Right. So. Uh, in 2010, uh, um, you know, my wife is actually a doctorate in, uh, in in biochemistry and in science, and she started to actually uh, she decided to start a venture, and I, uh, you know, uh, I, I just funded it, and you know, we, we we started Aria Life, you know, and at that point in time, the idea was to actually create some products or services which can actually resolve resolve some environmental issues through science, you know, because that was our subject, and. Uh, that's how Aria Life was actually coined, and we we focused on agriculture, and we we primarily uh, focused on developing some organic agri inputs. So we set up a small manufacturing shop uh, uh, under the brand name Aria Life, and uh, you know we were serving the the farmers here in in Maharashtra, which is the state where Pune is actually associated. I was continuing with my my technology business, and this was something which she started. And like any other good husband, over the weekends I would actually drive her to farmers. Uh, you know, she, while she is explaining those products to uh, uh, you know the, the farmers, which is there, that's when I realized uh, you know uh, that uh, there is actually a huge need for uh, technology in agriculture. You know, and uh, I thought that agriculture as an industry uh, was the the least served on technology. You know, and here I was Monday to Friday looking at industries, working with people like you in online fashion retail or any of those companies. Uh, you know, and improving their efficiency and agriculture uh, actually has nothing of those sort. And one question which perplexed me the most was that, you know, uh, the, the clothes you wear, you know, the television which you are watching, we know where it actually comes from. There is a batch code, you can trace it right through the source of where it was actually manufactured. But the food which we eat, if I actually ask you the morning breakfast which you had, where did it actually come from? Which farm? You actually do not know. Even in developed countries, you know, you might know that which store it came from, but actually which farm it came from, you really did not know. And that is the question which kept on perplexing me that how can I actually create traceability? Because at the end of the day, if you look at 40 to 50 percent of uh, issues today, even in today's uh, uh, time in terms of COVID also, a lot is actually due to foodborne thing. How do you actually increase immunity? How do you, you know? And if you know the source of the food, there is a lot of impact which we can do. And that's when I thought that, you know, I need to work on some technology, uh, you know, uh, in terms of doing it. But that idea kept on, you know, kept on uh, moving in my mind. But uh, 
uh, really did not know uh, how to play that up which is there but in 2016 i think uh, as as i as i went more and more and visited more than probably thousands of farmers uh, you know uh, interacting which is there which is there i think my belief became more and more stronger that technology can play a big role by 2016 uh, when i graduated from um, you know harvard in 2017 i was uh, i think my vision was very clear that i wanted to start an ag tech platform and it has to be a software platform spoke to some of my friends who were ready to invest in this venture and we we started developing this platform in 2017 um where the goal of this platform primarily is to actually you know uh, improve food production you know in terms of uh, uh, doing it so basically we want to actually ensure that whatever we are producing we produce it better increase the per acre uh, productivity uh, and uh, ensure that we use technology for that you know and trace it back to the uh, back to the source which is there we started in 2017 we are almost ready to launch now you know this is actually what in india we call it the monsoon season so this is when the the cropping season starts here so by the end of this month we are launching that platform but we already have 10000 farmers on the beta platform so one of the things i definitely was sure about is that you know i don't want to be somebody sitting in a ac lab and actually developing a software by not knowing my customers so you know I, there is there is actually a set of farmers who are involved with the development which is there and we what we call it in the in the in the software world the devops model where i have a set of customers who are actually part of my uh, my platform which is there um and uh, that's that's how, how how the journey started you know and uh, you know so far it's it's been great and i've, I've been receiving very positive feedback that's good good So so you started area life uh, so, but, but in what way do uh, how do you use technology to help farmers and, and what do you offer farmers Yeah so basically uh, uh, you know we are uh, uh, so there are two th- there are two components of uh, uh, the platform the uh, the platform actually has a mobile app uh, which is what uh, is uh, given to the farmers and there i think i'm i am more focusing on the process of farming so Uh, it's interesting when you actually ask any farmer and this is actually across the globe it's just not in india you ask any farmer hey by the way how did you learn farming and uh, you know they would say that yeah you know what my my parents were doing it or you know i read it somewhere but there is no structured way in which you are actually uh, teaching farming like if you are a lawyer you are a doctor you have a five year course to do it before you actually become that but when it comes to farmers there are no courses for farmers which is there so i thought that you know there are a lot of solutions in the market which focuses on the end result that is increasing the yield reducing the cost everybody is talking about it very few are talking about the process right you know at, at the end of the day so i am actually very focused on the process so i have a mobile app the moment the farmer registers he says what he is growing so suppose he is actually growing let's say crop of sugar cane he puts in his date of registration and every day morning you know he is told what to do in his farm and if he doesn't do that what's the impact which is there so what fertilizer to put how much to put and then obviously i have brought in a lot of iot devices to actually integrate so the soil testing uh, you know sensors are actually connected which is there so basically a more structured way of farming which is there i don't want to change the way they do things i just want to add efficiency to it so one of the thing which was very clear is that if i tell anyone to change that com- complete process you're doing all it all wrong which is there it's never going to work so my thing is actually more towards compounded benefits so improve your farming process 1% every day that will actually eventually contribute towards uh, um, uh, you know uh, the, the the overall good which is there so that's actually on the on the farmer side so every farmer actually has an app and i ensured that it is actually in the local language so that the adoption rate is there and then that actually gets connected to my back end where i have a, a team of agronomist who continuously serve the farmers and uh, you know so basically if they have a problem with the pest diseases whatever they have they can take a video in fact now with the with the covid thing happening which is that i'm also actually we have also thinking about technology of contactless farming so farmers can do video calls they can show their farms and we can actually help them without actually going and visiting the farms which are there so you know so while this was not something which i thought when i started out but you know uh, some a lot of those things are actually now helping because you know uh, so the back end platform generates all this data and intelligence it is connected to the weather data so you know it it has intelligence generated through our ai engine which is there and it advises farmers on an ongoing basis so it's it's very technology tech, technologically heavy so to say 
and and obviously you're using the smartphone. I'm I'm I might have the wrong idea, but I'm thinking rural India. How about connections? And we we work with customers who are in the states who are, who are complaining about not having internet connectivity all the time. Isn't that the case in in, in rural India as well? Actually, you'd be surprised, Kim, that uh, uh, you know the rural India. In fact, it, the rural India internet is actually faster than urban India, just surely because of the number of people using it. That's point number one. Yeah. Point number two. Very recently, you would have actually heard in the news that Mark Zuckerberg actually invested in a in, in our telecom company called as Reliance Geo. Uh, it's the first investment which Zuckerberg has done outside the U.S. You know, so basically, he sees the potential of uh, telecom and internet in India. And we have a population of 1.3 billion people and close to 1 billion mobile phones, right? So, and everybody, so, and maximum uh, WhatsApp users or Instagram users or Facebook users outside the US is actually in India. We have 300 to 400 million people actually using uh, these these technologies. So, I was actually surprised. I had the same apprehension like you. But when I actually went to the farmers, they are using Facebook, they are using WhatsApp in local languages. And they are communicate. They are consuming more digital data than us, actually. You know, so they watch their because they don't have. A lot of people do not have televisions. They watch everything on their mobile. A lot of localized content is there on the mobile. So you know, yeah, there. A lot of people have this perception that rural India does not have internet, but that's not the case, which is there. You know, yeah. it is. It is quite there in terms of everybody actually having a smartphone. Interesting. So you're not only offering your services to farmers, you're also thinking about the urban people who want to grow food at home. What are you offering them? Yeah, so basically, you know, this 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 actually came by, you know, uh, when I was in agriculture, my point was that, you know, see, whatever you are selling or you're servicing, you need to actually, you know, basically what the way you you need to cook your own, uh, own food or, you know, you need to be actually all involved. So I was talking to all my friends in terms of, you know, this farming thing and all of thing. And like you said, you know, it's rural India and all of it. So this question came to me and me, me and my wife was saying, how can we get our friends involved into this? You know, there was, there, there has to be some way they have to be also involved, which is there. So we started with a small experiment of doing a small workshop of growing food at home. You know, so we, we, we did a, uh, at our office, which is there, we, we told our friends, around Pune saying that, you know what, we are doing this workshop and if you have some space and you want to grow food at home, come and learn from us, which is there. And that workshop was an overnight hit, which is there, you know, and we, we uh, my office only had 40 people capacity, which is there, it was over full all the time. And then I actually had, uh, you know, brought this idea that we have a terrace in our office. So we said that I will actually produce whatever I can for my employees. So we have around 70 employees and then we started producing food, which is there. So. Peter and Kim, you'd be surprised that 50% of the food which you consume can be grown at your own house. You know, you really don't need to go to the market, right? Mm. I, you, I know you cannot grow a mango, or, uh, you know, or a, or a pomegranate, which is there, but you can grow potatoes, you can grow onions, your lettuce, your salad. And, you know, I've been to Sweden regularly and salads is a huge component of your, uh, of your, of your food, which is a, which all you can actually grow. So I basically, I said that, okay. If you have a 10 by 10 space for terrace, you know, I will actually bring up a mobile app. You register yourself, you register your family, you basically talk about your diet. Okay, I eat salads or I want to grow lettuce, I want to grow spinach. And then the same app will tell you every day morning what you need to do. You just need to spend 15 minutes like you, like you spend half an hour in your gym, spend 15 minutes in your terrace garden and you will be giving fresh food back to your family, which is there. And I started with this, uh, this this venture which is there and uh, I thought that let me start with Pune and I uh, right now have around uh, 300 families uh, already using this platform and then we are so then I, I was very sure that you know all my friends from IT oh yeah I can do that but you know what I'm so busy I'm traveling I said okay no problem I'll send you a gardener at your place every week is that okay with you so I you know so if you do not do I'll send a gardener which is there and if you get stuck somewhere do a video call to my agronomist so basically I didn't want them to I didn't want to give any reason why you cannot grow food at home and imagine the scenario now okay you cannot step out of your house okay we had the last workshop which we took was that how can you grow food from the food you already have at home right yeah. you can't go out to buy you cannot go out to buy seeds you cannot go out to buy fertilizer so how do you self sustain yourself you can actually you if you have an uh, a tomato you can use those seeds again to actually regrow if you actually have, so there is there is a method in which you can actually do that 
and that's what we are actually teaching which is there and what can you do to increase your immunity right over the again is that to increase your immunity a lot of things like basil and a lot of these uh, these herbs which you can grow it can be grown at home and then there is no issue of temperature there is no because it's, you are in a controlled environment which is there and all we are asking is that spend half an hour right you know you you are already health conscious the world is more health conscious spend half an hour on the on the app and that's it so basically then what i you know the, the vision actually expanded to saying that whether it is urban or rural okay anything to do with food production i'll actually help you you know and this platform will actually help you uh, step by step which is there it's uh, it sounds really great so so but what is the cost for farmers how, how, what is your business model yeah so my business model is very clear that i am not going to charge farmers so just to give you an idea we have uh, the, the state of maharashtra itself is around 20 million farmers and uh, the gujarat uh, which is the other state joining state which is there you know these are the two states which is actually close to 38 million farmers which is what my my initial target base is india itself is around 120 million farmers and worldwide we are talking about 580 million farmers this is not home growers this is farmers i just did a quick search on uh, uh, on facebook of people who are interested in terrace gardening it's 65000 people just in the city of pune okay so just imagine the number of people who which would be there who just who are interested in terrace gardening so my model is primarily that uh, farmers will actually use this platform to improve their productivity the data which is generated is useful for the entire agri value chain right so if you are somebody who is actually producing an agri input my b2c model serves the b2b model right so it actually serves the businesses which are there so if you are an agri input company if you are a seed company or you want you are actually buying back vegetables from the farmer my you can use my platform or you are a company let's say like mcdonalds or pepsi which is actually growing potatoes you know for your lays or for a uh for mcdonald's in a specific format okay you can use my platform for your set of farmers like contract farming which is there right so either you can use my farmers who are already on the platform or you all i have your own platform network which is there you can actually use that so my model is to actually benefit the the, the business user so the driver gets charged to get on uber not the consumer right so basically it is basically the businesses who will actually you know fund the platform which is there and they are going to benefit from the data i generate look at the urban part if i know kim what you are growing at home and peter what you are growing at home i can give you tips i can map nutritions to you nutritionist to you i can map the right gym professional to you you know any of these things which are there to actually help you live a healthy and sustainable life again when these people want this data what is the nutritionist looking today i they want data of people who want to who are growing nutritious food so those are the people who will actually benefit from out of it so very similar to probably a google or a facebook the end consumer is not charged on the platform uh, obviously you know if uh, a home grower i have a model where if they want plus services like if they want a gardener at home they will obviously pay for the subscription and the labor which is there but otherwise the, the the core platform is actually free for people to use i don't want to have any restriction for people to actually use it i think that sounds really yeah. interesting so you're now in a beta version and and you're planning to launch in june now that the monsoon rains are coming so what's your vision yeah. for for when do you sort of expect your company to be profitable yeah so my uh, you know luckily i actually have investors who are very patient uh, you know so they there is no pressure in immediately uh, generating revenue but the whole idea right now is to uh, increase adoption of the platform so my my goal number 1 is that by end of this year i you know so i, I like i told you you know my i am just in two states of india my overall india market size is actually around uh, 120 million farmers so there is no way with any machinery i can reach everywhere so i am very clear that i want to be small and boutique and go vertical and deep into one market before i actually expand so this year is about maybe 100000 uh, farmers on the platform and maybe you know uh, 20000 households in uh, on on the urban side on the platform which is there uh, and then once i actually prove the model and you know the, the the model is actually there then that data gets reused so on the business side i you know uh, i believe that it is going to be a 2 to 3 year journey which is there but the idea is to actually generate what we call it as the gmv the gross merchandising value the more people are actually there on the platform okay the more data i am generating that data is something which is useful for various businesses 
so who knows so right now we are talking to many uh, many public private partnerships where they are very interested in using our data and doing it and uh, they are ready to actually even uh, you know pay us which is there but we have been very 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 clear in terms of not taking money at this point and get tempted which is there we want to ensure that we uh, the farmers use it and we want to see that change of productivity which we are promising so this year is actually more in terms of adoption um, but we see that by by i would say that by 2022 uh, you know we we would actually break even and actually you know whatever we have invested on the platform you know we we would ensure that you know people will actually come in but you know we are having very very uh, you know kind of discussion which we are having with some of the government organizations they're talking about huge like just here, just last week i was talking to uh, an agency which they wanted 10 million farmers on this platform and they they wanted to do an mou I, and they wanted it in french <laughs> and i said i'm not ready you know and they said that okay no problem we will give you resources let's anyway start it in french let's not wait which is there because we want to gather data which is there so there is there is huge demand which is there and actec as an industry which started in 2016 as a 4 billion market size is today a 14 billion market so even in sweden if i have to actually tell you that uh, i think it's uh, it's uh, what is the place gothenburg there is actually a company called heliospectra which is there uh, which is into you know uh, lights uh, led lights which yeah. are there for growing lights is there then there is actually a company which you would have heard which the d level which is actually more into uh, dairies and all of it yeah. i think it's somewhere below stockholm i think it's trimble or uh, trimba what is the space name uh, you know the, the place name just below stockholm which is there. so there are a lot of actec companies in sweden also so actec as a space is growing at 40% year on year there are 450 startups last i know i have actually ventured into actec in multiple spaces somebody is actually making drones somebody is actually uh, you know uh, doing something on the software side somebody is making spens- uh, sensors but all of this can actually be integrated with platforms like mine or other people who are doing similar things so the more people will actually get into this space the better it is because eventually everybody is contributing on on yeah. food which is a sick need which yeah. is there, right Sounds like you've uh, hit a gold mine and really uh, found your your space in the market. Yes. Right. It's been very interesting to listen to your story. So so thanks a lot. I I might Thank actually you. take you up on and getting on the uh, app because my son who's 14, he's very much into us starting to grow things in our garden. I'm not as uh, um enthusiastic as he is, but uh, maybe um maybe this way we can learn more. Yeah, actually, uh, very interesting because a lot of people actually tell me this that today's youngsters, okay, the the competition is in terms of being fit, making innovative salads. Uh, you know, unlike probably when we were in college, we would probably be you know doing some other stuff which is there than yeah. this. But you know, today's <laughs> generation is very different, and uh, this which is obviously very encouraging yeah. because you know uh, at the end of the day, everything is to do being sustainable and uh, you know have a healthy living. Exactly. So well, thank you so much for joining so much. us Vinny and sharing your story and take care. Good All luck. Right. Take take it. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Fantastic story. Yeah, so talk about com- combining sort of a greater good uh disrupting an industry, creating an interesting business model, data driven yes. and with technology. I think it's really of, inspiring. Yes, really. There's a lot of different pieces here that that can help yeah. other companies to to think different. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, thank you for joining us today. Make sure to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel to not miss any uh, future episodes, of course. Thank you and bye-bye. Bye.